there's any change, I want to know immediately. Jenny, you know where I am. Yes, Mr. Beaufort. Daddy, I'm even a little bit early. Not like me at all, is it? Good God, you look wonderful. Ah. Uh, uh, afraid something's come up. We're not going to have lunch, then? Ah, uh, I'm terribly sorry. You'd forgotten, hadn't you? No, don't be silly. Of course you I weren't even going to wait. Liz, I've just got a very important meeting. I simply can't cancel it. Please understand. What's Miss Belfort trying to do? Kill herself? It looks like it, doesn't it? I know I can't keep up with her. I'm not even going to try. Ah, it's just a phase. It'll pass. Liz! Liz! Where have you been? I brought her over because I wanted you to be the first to know. You know what? Bluebird's expecting. Makes two of us. A pile of research going in here, I see. The private dining room, chef. And I'm afraid you'll have to keep the time flexible. For all I know, this chap might want to set out for a vegetarian hamburger. Full red carpet. Must be quite a customer. Anyway, his money's rock solid. Is there any the odd gap in his credentials? I want to search on those. Being looked after, sir. Touch of impudence about that young man, I've always thought. He's the best there is in the business, Sir Geoffrey, so we'll just have to put up with it. And he did have a point. What is so important about this particular client? Miles, you really must learn patience. I enjoy a morning tour of the city, Congressman. Just Joe will do. We've known each other a while. But I always like to know where I'm going and what it's about. You used to be more careful in Africa. Never discuss business in diplomatic limousines. I'm not a diplomat. True. You're never patient either, but you're going to have to be both this time. It's not my style. Unless you want the IRS to have a look at that second set of books from the old days. You wouldn't. Leverage, Mike. What makes the world go round? Joe. Not here, anywhere but here. Thanks for the guided tour anyway, but I play games on pitches I choose. Not this time, Mike. And you know me. Everything that I've got on you is leverage. Believe it. Rigby. Oh, God, not again. Yes, I know Liz Beaufort's called every hour on the hour. Look, Angela, my pet, summon your considerable power. Shouldn't take too long. They think of a new excuse. Oh, I don't know, uncontactable. Unconscious. Out to lunch. Out to lunch. <laughs> Congressman, this is Miles Beaufort. Uh, Joe, just Joe will do, like the voters call me. Glad to know you, Miles. Uh, and this ah, is... Ah, yes, we do know each other. Yes, that's right, I believe you do. And I know it can get a bit abrasive, but that's why I brought you together. Mr. Savage is to be my investment manager. Oh, no, not in anything to do with this institution, he has not. Miles, this is a business proposition, and I refuse to allow personal feelings to enter into it. Shall we be seated, gentlemen? Coffee's on the way. 
Oh, well, thank you, Sir Jeffrey, but I talk better on my feet. Uh, most politicians do. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, interests that I represent and for which Thompson Morehouse, you, Miles, and Mike here will act, have 20 million pounds to invest. Why us? Because it promises to be profitable, but mainly because our American associates recommend it strongly. And banks get scratched everywhere, I see. Go on, Joe, what do you expect for your 20 million? Well, a low risk, high return investment portfolio of impeccable respectability. No dogs, no floaters. It's everybody's idea of Christmas. My God, you must have been offered a hell of an inducement to go into the business of making a profit for somebody else. Just goodwill, Miles. I know I'm right. 20 million to play with. The Thompson Morehouse reputation for city probity Miles Beaufort's skill and Mike Savage's flair. Who's going to be in charge of picking all these winners you're looking for? Well, Mike will, of course. But counseled by you and very accountable to me. Great team. You're right, Joe. Great team. Of course, I should be working out of Charlie Neville's dealing rooms. Mr. Savage, there's a perfectly good dealing room at Thompson Morehouse. Yes, please forgive me, Sir Jeffrey. But if I'm running things... So this is where the sordid saga began. Yep. Gorgeous pouting Liz, bored with horses, stood up by her stinking rich city dad, pursued by handsome Yuppo Terry, but persuaded by silver-tongued Rigby. So how do you raise her out of town? In your bucking pen, Two or three. Minus. <laughs> Sailing a bit close to the wind, aren't you? Liz Beaufort. If people had tried to headhunt you 17 times, you'd understand. Servicing the boss's daughter is no problem. Well, we've worn out the tack room phone. And you say you were trying all yesterday. We're just going to have to go and see this, Chris. Suppose so. No suppose about it. You know, Liz, you haven't even wondered once what your father's going to say. Oh, there's no point. He wouldn't care. Besides, he needn't ever know. Yes, but not... I still think it's much more Beau's line of country than mine. Gran, can Grandmother, I... Grandmother, dear. Or Eleanor. Not Gran, Granny or Grandma, if you please. And it's May. Eleanor, may I borrow the car, please? Provided you let Paula drive. You look exhausted. Thank you. Come on, Liz, you've got a change. I wonder what all that was about. Sorry, you were saying? Well, I've said it. I'm an estate agent who's good at her job. Very good. And I want to do some more advanced buying. And for that, I need a bank loan. And for that, I need a guarantor. I still say, why not ask Bo? <sighs> because he'd say yes, scribble a signature, pat me on the head, and generally humor me. In fact, I'd rather he didn't know. Very well. Get your bank manager to write to me or send me a form or whatever bank managers do these days. Dear me, what an affectionate morning. Well, I think I can safely leave things in your capable hands now, Bo. See you all at luncheon. Sir Geoffrey gave up a day's golf for this meeting. Greater love hath no man. Your connections must be very influential, Congressman. Some cloud, I guess, here and there. Ask Mike. Some. Where did you two meet, Africa? That's right. Some companies I was concerned with were, uh, what's that dumb word? Disinvesting. Mike helped out. Ah, more incentive, eh? Who's dirt under what carpet, I wonder? Lebanese, I think. He never walked anywhere. He couldn't. He always had this money belt with crew grounds around his waist. It was so heavy, he could hardly get into a taxi. <laughs> this is the place. What is she doing here? Liz Bowden from our village, the squire's daughter. Chris, can I talk to you, please? Oh, Liz! So it was you on the phone all morning. My acolytes travel from every corner of the globe just to breathe the same air <laughs> or touch my Armani clad frame. 
state your business, sugar lips. Oh, for God's sake, Chris, it's important. Well, if you're that desperate, go and play with your horses. <laughs> Don't be a prank, Chris. I think you'd better talk to her. And now. You know, I can't understand it. When there are so many hunks in the world, why is it always me? <laughs> Chris, I'm pregnant. You're what? Pregnant. Yawn. Oh, come on, Chris. You knew it was the first time. Yeah, you hardly let me forget. Well, so now what? You deal with it. There's a clinic I know, Posh and Jolly. I'll slip you a can cash and we can be pals again. Hell, we can even have a return match once in a while. I grant you. Paula, what are you doing here? This I'm better sorry. be bloody no, damn George, important. it's all right. I'll handle it. It's not you I came to see, Daddy. It's Mr. Beaufort. About Liz. All right, it's time for a break anyway. Pick up in, what, half an hour? But why don't you show the congressman the city sights? Yeah, sure, Bob. Come on, Mike, let's take five, huh? I'll be all right, Dad. What's a secret, champ? It's all in the wrist, actually. <laughs> More like your wallet than this stuff, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Congressman, will you excuse me for not joining? Of course. Nice class of saloon you got here. <laughs> Rigby! I understand you've been talking to my daughter. That's right. It's a free country. Who says she's pregnant by you? So she says. And if it's me? My daughter tells the truth, Rigby. I suppose this is a situation any father with a daughter of marriageable age must expect. You're taking it very well. I haven't finished. I'd rather it had been anyone than something like you. A city rabbit, a pocket calculator in a suit. But then it's done. Is that all? No. What I will not forgive is your public and contemptuous dismissal of her and the words that you used. You are obviously dismissed from Thompson Moore House. I will also see to it that you are unemployed in this city. Or indeed in any city. I am now going to knock your head off. Don't even try to get up, kid. He'll kill you. Luncheon in 15 minutes, gentlemen, if that's all right. Style. Thought it was extinct. It is. We had a deal, Reggie. You let me down. But I want that house. It's not easy. Tell me something worthwhile. Abbey National has a special low rate for mortgages over 60,000. Friends in high places, Reggie. Your new home. What about mortgages? Don't worry. Abbey National does them to suit all types. Buy it. Oh, do buy it. But we simply can't afford it. Oh. How about an Abbey National low start mortgage? Oh. Mortgages with Abbey endings. These three girls are all wearing new Harmony hairspray. Spray with firmer hold and gentle conditioning. If it's your style, hold on to it. By putting SO quality petrol in your tank, you can also have quality gifts for the family, like this four hour videotape, for example, or one of the many other exciting new gifts on offer, such as this sharp portable CD player. 
In fact, the new Esso collection contains a choice that will appeal to everyone. Pick up a catalogue where you see the Esso collection sign and make sure you keep collecting those tiger tokens. I could never imagine life without the dogs. We always get up early to make sure that they're well exercised. They love to free run and that's nice to have that extra vitality that good feeding gives. For nourishment you can see in a dog, Christine McDonald relies on pedigree chunk. Like so many top readers, she knows that the correct food is vital for fitness and peak condition. Pedigree Chum. Top readers recommend it. I was dead excited when I saw this offer in my boxes of team and small shredded tweets. Collect four of these, it said, and straight away you've got a one pound record token. So I did, and I put it towards one of those compact discs. <laughs> Tokens can also go towards albums, cassettes, or videos. Well, you're healthy enough, child. Is he? He's very fit. Plays lots of sport and things. Hmm. Would I like him? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Well, that's one problem solved then. I think I better have another small brandy. No, you can't have one. You don't need it. You're only pregnant. Liz, first there was this Terry person and you mooning around the house infatuated. Now this, this... Rigby. Chris Rigby. Will there be many more? No, Eleanor. I believe you, and I'm glad. I'm not fool enough to think that to cleave to him only, forsaking all others, still applies, but your turning into a harlot would have worried me most of all. Well, it needn't, Grandmother, and I think the word is slag. Well, I'm sure it is, if you want to be mealy mouth. I wonder what Beau's reaction will be. So do I. But not much. Here's your pint, Constable. Thanks. Can't you switch the thing off? Well, I have to congratulate you formally on a pitch prepared to perfection. Thank you, Mr. Fleischer. Now, you tell that to my lumbago. And my wife. Still, it's always worth it for the visitors' match. Well. It's the best day's cricket of the year in Hunt and Magna, even if we do get a thrashing. Andrew Savage will nominate as his visitor this year. Mm. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jack. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Mr. Savage. I must say, it looks marvellous. All my own work. If I'd known that, I'd have come down and given you a hand. Well, with two horse-mad daughters and a work-mad husband, I could have done with the company. Nowadays, this is the only place I get to see him. Mm. <laughs> I've been through the prospectus with a fine tooth cut. So have I. Looks like a good first shot to me. Developing country, established company. I'm with Mike. Do you know who wrote the lyrics to Ragtime Cowboy Joe? No. Nor do I, but whoever it was should sue the lyric writer of that prospectus. Romantic fiction, they're broke. You sound awfully sure, Bill. Look at the World Bank report. It's not out yet. Not to most people. Only the well-connected. Brought the car keys back. Thank you. Jenny still well rang. She saw us in the wine bar. Heard everything. Oh God, it'll be all over the village by now then. Liz Beaufort's in the pudding club. She was there when your father came in. What was he doing there? Come on, Paula, what? I'd been to see him. You what? Somebody had to. But you didn't have to go and... I told him about you and what Chris Rigby had said. Oh, Paula, you couldn't have. Well, I did. Your father stalked in there, chatted to this Rigby. Chatted? Yes, he wasn't fed up about the pregnancy. It was the way you'd been treated. Sacked Rigby. Sounds like my father. Work first. Listen. Then he clouted him right across that stupid pyramid of glasses and left.
Mm -hmm. Are you gardening for enjoyment or therapy? Therapy. Where's Liz? About halfway to Ludlow by now, I should think. Ludlow? Mm, to my sister, your Aunt Millicent, on whose Christmas card I forge your signature every year. Oh, yes, I know. He's rattling on about her spaniels and her needlepoint. Never about being a widow with two sons dead. Yes, that one. She'll look after Liz. Why, Mother? Because I didn't think either of you would be in a fit state to talk to each other. I heard about your reaction in a wine bar at lunchtime. Very like your father. Of course, horse whips were easier to come by then. Damn. Oh, why Sorry. don't you go down to the pub and talk cricket? Walk. It'll do you good. By the way, the whole village knows about Liz by now. There you are, Elizabeth. Auntie, I... Did you have a dreadful journey? All that rattling and banging at those enormous speeds. It really is very kind of you. It's nothing of the sort, Chad. I'm delighted to see you. Come on, Nelson. In you go. You know his eyes have never been very good. Good, you two. Can't well, we say hello, at least? Oh. Come on, love and bloom. Hi, Dad. Hello, darling. Mm. See you. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. In late. Out early. The invisible man, huh? Nice day in the office. Yeah, all right. Joe Ronstadt's got me over a barrel. It's a percentage deal I did years ago. But he's delivered Miles Beaufort into my tiny hands. And that makes it a nice day in the office. Yeah, of course. What about Liz Beaufort? And poor old Bo going berserk in a wine bar. <laughs> Who told you? Paula. Well, telling me my sense of priorities isn't quite what it should be, huh? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. So how's the Perkins butcher shop under its new propriety? Oh, settling in. Still miss the bright lights, though. Younger brothers always do. Trouble is, Jim's regular customers expect me to know their life histories, and I don't. Good evening, gentlemen. What are we all having? On a weekday. A rare pleasure. I uh, came to ask about the pitch for the visitors on Sunday. I don't think it'll do them any favours, Mr. Beaufort. No? Certainly not the batsman, with the heavy roller as 12th man. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad to see Alan Metcalf's accepted again as your visitor this year. Yes, always with the same old whale. Too many business interests in Australia. He's overweight, he's not match fit. I first saw him at Lord's. Mm. He could hit boundary after boundary with just, just a, a flick, flick of, of his, his wrist. wrist. He still can, Jack. I know. Then stunt back to the pavilion, muttering, what does that bloody umpire mean, leg before? Must think I've got legs like a bloody elephant. <laughs> 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 Jack, could I have a word with you? Yeah, of course. Look, Jack, I'd like to ask you another favour, if I may. Any time. Pleasure. Pass the word, would you? Oh, no. Once a thing's public, it may as well stay public. Liz has gone to stay at Ludlow with her great aunt Millicent, Eleanor's sister. No nursing homes, no skulking, no decisions yet. It's early days, sir. I'll see to it. Thanks a lot. I phoned Simon Claymore today. What? The ultimate ad man? I thought he only took calls from number 10. Normally he does. Hmm. How's his harem and family these days? What is it? Five children, three divorces? I never counted. Hmm. What'd you call him for? 
I once used to be a very good copywriter, and I'm sick of days spent twiddling my thumbs. What do you mean things are slack? Look, Giles, you're a top headhunter. You know better than that. You've made me three offers in the last four months, you and the rest of the pack. There's 70, then 80, then 90k, plus a percentage and the Porsche thrown in. Hello? Giles! Bastards. And last week it was coming up lunch, Chris. Chris, we must have a serious chat. Unmitigated bastards. Forget it, you're dead meat now. Your number's off everybody's list. So if you'll excuse me, some people have got work to do. Oh, leave it out, Penniman. I know who'll hire me. And why. Oh, that's fine. Oh, if you will excuse me just a minute. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? Midweek, mid-morning? Well, I wondered if I could buy a hard-working estate agent lady a cup of coffee. Tell her my trouble's in daylight for a change. Oh, I'd love to, Bo, but I'm with a client and on the verge of clinching the sale. Perhaps you will call me later? Tell me what you're holding and what's of interest to me. First, you don't like Miles Beaufort any more than I do. Private fight. 90 seconds. OK. I'm a researcher. The best. I've dug up, tracked and analysed a lot of projects for Thompson Morehouse. Short, medium and long term. I don't want the story of your life. I know which projects are simmering and which are on the boil. I've got the computer codes for them in my head. I can access the codes from the terminal in my flat and tell you where to put the Ronstadt money or any other. I can give you the inside track. You're on. <laughs> and that model agency we were going to use when the vice squad stepped in. We lost the client but gained a reputation. Advertising. <laughs> Don't knock it. It keeps you in the manner to which you are accustomed. You've forgotten how you could make me laugh, unlike some of the ladies I've known. How are the marital stakes? Those meaner beauties of the night which poorly satisfy our eyes. <laughs> With you? Forgotten. Now, business. You want a job, freelance. Why? Not enough laughs. Anything I can do? <laughs> no, no, it's boredom mainly. And not domestic rivalry. Well, not much anyway. Thank God for that. I've had my share of hard-faced competitive ladies. And I used to be a fairly good copywriter. Well, not fairly good. Beautiful. Simon. All right. Good to very good. A rare quality. Now, the market research. All I strain as usual, nothing changes, and the product samples are in there. And here's a cheque for £2,000 as a retainer. What's the product? Oh. Come on, Simon. How do you fancy agricultural machinery? Not a lot, to be frank. Oh, you beast! Come on, what is it? Perfume. That's about as distinguished a solo as a soloist can be given. Has it got a name? Not yet. What's the budget? Two million. I better get it right. Why else are you here? <laughs> Press is set up, Charlie. Thank you, Congressman. We'll be handling the 20 mil through here. Uh-huh. Like beavers. Now, Mike, 
What the hell is this about renegotiating the deal we've got? I mean, what is this, some kind of goddamn Arab bazaar? Not far from it. Yesterday, I was hijacked and went along with the leverage. And 5% of the profits. Ten. Mike, Mike, you're out of your tree. It's not an uncommon percentage for a top investment manager. Check it out. I have. Okay, smart ass. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 10% of the profits if you'll stand good for the same 10% of any losses. You buy that? Okay. Mike, that's lunatic. You must be pretty damn sure of yourself. I am. Inside track. Right. Are you ready? Here we go. Your daughter's very prompt with her evening calls, as promised. How is she? Sounds very bright. Millie says she is. And, uh, she sends her love. When's she coming home? Up to her, I should think. There was also a phone call from your younger daughter. Reverse charge, of course. Of course. Trust Kate. But in immaculate French. She's enjoying her lycée. And? Will I soften you up for a completely new set of skiing gear? <sighs> Good God, at this time of the year. An early Christmas present was mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> I must say you're looking a lot better for just one day off. Yes, I feel it. I think I might take another couple, actually. Well, they know where the panic buzzer is. Yeah. 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 Say that again. What? I'm just looking at the market reaction to our efforts today. Fantastic. Good. Uh -huh. I'm going to cream it on this one. Very lucrative indeed. Good morning, Sir Geoffrey. Morning, Alex. Decent sort of day. Well, it, it was. I've, um, I've just got the start of business figures, and there are a lot of fluctuations I really don't like. Mm -hmm. All of them involving companies in which this bank has a very strong and direct interest. Let me see those. Deal around the market. And watch that one. It's volatile. Pete, it's Adam. Order to sell. Put it all back the other way. immediately after Sir Jeffrey's office, OK? Thank you. He's landed. Well, i got to say this to you, Mike. When you go, you go. Very impressive. 20 million up to 22, just like that. You're a genius, buddy boy. <laughs> Congratulations. Check you later, huh? OK. I don't know how you're doing it, Mike, but it's working. The question is, how long can you keep it up? As long as I damn well like, Charlie. Why, George? Gentlemen. Oh, sorry to drag you in, Miles. That's what the buzz is for. Now, as I said on the phone, it seems that someone has got an in to our confidential reports. Every company that we've researched favorably has suddenly shot up in price, but is now falling. Somebody is, is buying in, watching them rise, then taking their profits and getting out. Including the companies we've been nursing, Miles. Large lines of stock from the same source. Do we know the source? No. The business has been well spread among the market makers. Somebody's been clever. Someone has plugged into our information. Who? I think Savage. Using Ronstadt's money. And the computer bell. It's Rigby. Then we should have the law on them both. Sue them! No, Sir Geoffrey. First, how do we prove it? Second, how stupid do we look if we try? Thirdly, on a technicality, mind you, I don't think computer hacking is actually illegal yet. Well, then we ought to recode the computer. No. If they want to sod about with computers, two can play. <laughs>
According to the rule book, a car with a reputation for safety can't be exciting. The new Volvo 440, the car that changes the rules. Our loyal clientele will be pleased to hear that we at TOGS have made a few refinements to our nappies. For your <laughs> convenience, TOGS now come in his and hers, each designed to give more ultra-absorbency where most needed. Quite so. In addition, the now classic elasticated waist, if I may say, is accompanied by the TOGS perfect fit band. Perfection. In our opinion, the ultimate design in nappies. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Starting in this week's Mail on Sunday at U Magazine, a five-part guide to country walks around Britain. Are you ready, Boots? Start walking! Imagine a shampoo this pure, this gentle. Timothée shampoo with natural herb extracts. Timothée rinses clean away to leave your hair soft and shiny, no matter how many times you use it. Timothée, all it leaves is beautiful hair. Hello, Beaufort. Well, a rare honour. I thought you once said these places were too much like fish markets. No, not me. I like fish. Sorry I couldn't give you more notice. Must be important. It is. It's all right, Charlie. You stay there. Yes. I want you to hear this. You are about to invest a substantial sum of Ronstadt's money in these four companies. That is a formal letter from Thompson Morehouse advising most strongly against such an investment. I can read, Bo. And I am managing this investment. Well, I tried. A copy has gone to the congressman, by hand, of course. Of course. Business sounds brisk. Oh, it is, Bo, it is. What was all that about? Miles Beaufort gracing these humble premises in person. He's rattled. And for once, he's showing it. These four companies are little firecrackers that he wants to apply the match to, and they rock it in person. He's trying to do it before I do. Then we go ahead. We certainly do. Now, oh, come on, it's money for old rope. We're coining it in. We can't lose. Exactly. But listen, my lunch is here. I've got to go. I'll talk to you later. Okay? Bye. Who's the lucky boy, then? I don't think I've seen you before. Rowena? Well, Chris, this is what I've got for you today. Marinated baby mealies, marbled egg mayonnaise, sliced cold chicken with aioli and fresh figs. Mm. A melody of vegetables and a dozen oysters. Mm. Gorgeous. Best food in town you people make. Uh, Colin, you can go after the next delivery. Oh, my Colin. What more could a man eat? Mm. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, oh, steady on, kids. Right, you Come on, kids. Yeah, Mr. Okay, Metcalf okay. hasn't even unpacked yet. <laughs> uh, get your priorities right, Tom. These are how I started. Come on, off you go. OK, I'll catch up with you all later. Nice Hi. to see you again, Good Alan. to see you. Remember, Jack? Yeah. Good day, Jack. Still keeping the peace? Just about. <laughs> ah, it's a beautiful ground, uh, Constable Perkins. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Metcalf. Yes, pitch is looking a bit green. Expect it'll turn for you after about 20 overs. Oh, Constable Perkins wouldn't do that. 
After all, he's the upholder of justice here. <laughs> there isn't any justice in cricket, uh, Mr. Fletcher, except perhaps for fast bowlers. Come on, come on, reaction. Don't think about the question too much. It reminds me of... It reminds me of... Manure. Now she's come back from the stable. Oh, doing your dirty work. A bath would do you no harm, really. Well, at least it's an honest smell, not pretentious. <laughs> Kim, before your bath, go and dig out my penguin book of quotations. My side of the bed somewhere. Sniffing quotations? Fetch this, get that, have a bath. <laughs> That's not back yet. Mm. Ah, here he is. You two met last year, didn't you? Could I forget? Mm. How are you going, Jenny? Okay. Look, we were hoping you'd join us for dinner. Like hell. You'd be frightened I'd run off with her and set up a love nest in Perth. But you lived in Melbourne. You get the idea, sport. Besides, I'd rather go and uh, talk cricket with these good folk. Get rid of him. Nice man. He's so at ease with himself, so confident, his own person. It's funny how you find it much more among men than among women. Well, I suppose women have got husbands, children, you know, things. Things? You should be much more like that, like Ellen. Oh, why don't you take up cricket? Well, you really don't know what I'm trying to say, do you? Not got a clue. What is it, women's lip, is it? <laughs> no, a long way from that. Look, why did you tell me all about it over dinner? I'll tell you about it when I've done it. 28 mil down to 18. You seen these figures? Yep. And this letter from Thompson Morehouse. Miles Beaufort. Advising you, and I quote, very strongly against these investments. Delivered to me in person. Yes, I've read it. And you still bought these four dogs? Yes. And now we're down 10 million. We're also down 2 mil on the original investment. Jesus! We could have put the money in savings and loan and done better. I know that. I also know that I am down to pay my percentage of the loss. It may or may not break me, but I will pay it. Driver! This is where I get out, Congressman. It may be urgent, but Mr. Beaufort's on the telephone. Now, would you please sit down, and I will let you know immediately it's free. And that is now. Thank you. You bastard. I'm sorry, Mr. Beaufort. You could have recoded the computer. You didn't have to poison it altogether. You shouldn't have hired a computer spy in the first place. And I sure as hell wouldn't have used a company that's down for an investigation by the fraud squad. What the hell's... Oh, sorry. Oh, come in, Alex. This should interest you. Michael, I don't think you fully appreciate how difficult this was. You tried picking the worst four horses in a 300-horse race and then falsifying their track records. Crooked and typical. Yes, yes. Incidentally, the fraud squad one was private knowledge. Oh, yours? Or yours? Both of us. Come on, would you expect Charlie Neville to carry the can for you? It's a dirty trick, Bo. And I really owe you now. Yes? Let me in, Rigby. Listen, somebody wrong-footed us. We were stitched up. And I know who. There was no way I could have known about it. Believe me. Win some, lose some. Yeah, that's the way to take it, I suppose. You want a drink? You play cricket, don't you? Yes. Proper cricket, not your village green stuff. I looked you up. Batsman. Almost county class. What do you mean, almost? I played county. You're good enough to play on the same side as Alan Metcalf. I don't see why not. There's a visitors match at Hunter Magna this weekend. I would like you to be my visitor. Why? First, I have a contact in Singapore who just might give you a job. And second, you can slog Miles Beaufort all over the ground. Right, Mr. Perkins. 
Ready when you are. I'm sure there's no need for concern yet. Let's hope so, anyway. Yes, dear, of course I will. That was Millie. Apparently, Liz is still out and she hasn't telephoned. She hasn't telephoned here, either. God's sake! Where the hell does she think she is? Some progressive boarding school with pass keys? Liz is far too well-mannered to let Millie worry. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I blow my stack, but I'm worried. I'm sorry. I'll give it half an hour, then I'm going to turn everything loose, OK? Oh, no, Are you and my visitor? This is uh, Chris Rigby. It's Tom Fletcher. Jack Perkins. Uh, Rigby, eh? I reckon you're a bit of a bat. 87 not out last week. Congratulations. They said I could have made a living at it, but there were better livings to be made. I didn't think it was possible for anyone to stoop so low. Yes, Beaufort. Oh, yes. Oh, it's Jack Perkins. Yes, Jack, what's happened? Oh, We've just heard who it. Mike Savage's visitor is for the match. What's that? It. It's all right. I'm sorry, Jack. I was, I was half expecting another call. Go on. Right, it's yeah. Chris Rigby. Oh, you should know. Is it indeed? Thank you very much, Jack. First wicket down is my guess. Good, that suits me fine. Thanks again. Good night. Good night. Come on, Liz. We must phone Millie. Hmm? It's past her bedtime. How much do I owe you? Well, I told her 70, but I got lost a couple of times, so uh, make it 65, eh? Look, there's 100. Oh, this money. Go on, it's not nearly enough. I've got one that age myself. There can be a little bit of a problem. Good night. Good night. What an extraordinary thing to do. There are railway timetables and arrangements and things. Where's your suitcase? Well, you see, I was just walking along the road and I wanted to come home so badly I started to run and then I saw this taxi and... Oh, I'll pay Daddy back, I promise. And that's a tale I've heard before. Right, now, you've just got time for a bath. The late-night movie on telly's a western. I'll be in bed with an improving book. Raymond Chandler in plain covers. Hmm. Incidentally, did you know uh, Chris Rigby's playing in the visitors' match tomorrow? Is he now? Well, I must come and watch that. Who's in the Western? <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have finagled this invitation, Alex. Oh, tall congressman, not at all. Every visitor to England should see a village cricket match. Just a fast hello, darling. We can't stay long. Great to see you, Mike. Sorry to wreck your wife's afternoon of business. Enjoy yourself. You're in first term. Should be a while. Relax.
football. Beaufort's county class, you know. Been asked umpteen times. What's this? Are you trying for the test or something? Something. Your father's pounding down today. This is his favourite match. You mean his favourite blood sport? Yes. What's that? Better way to show contempt. Crashed every year, and this year was better. Oh, it was good cricket. We'll right. make a touring side of you fellows yet, as soon as we get the ashes back. <laughs> oh, <no job. laughs> you owe me one, Mike. How did you enjoy the match, Congressman? Well, some aspects, yes. Of course, I guess you have to know the rules. It helps. 